بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم کیسے ہیں آپ دس از لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی لیٹ اسٹارٹ فرسٹ وی ٹیک ریویو آف لاسٹ لیکچر ان لاسٹ لیکچر وی ڈسکسڈ ہاؤ وی کین ڈسکرائب بائی ویریٹ ڈیٹا سیٹ اینڈ ان پارٹیکولر وی ڈسکسڈ ڈفرینٹ میتھڈس آف ڈسکرائبنگ دا بائی ویریٹ ڈیٹا سیٹس ان پارٹیکولر وی ڈسکسڈ اسکیٹر پلاٹ اینڈ کنسیپٹ آف کورلیشن and then we discussed in the last lecture the properties of correlation and we discussed related examples and related excel demo so the objectives of the current lecture uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss the common misconceptions about correlation uh, usually correlation is uh, used in a wrong way in real life and there are many situations in which uh, people deceive the other uh, individuals or layman persons uh, with the help of wrong interpretation of correlation. So we will discuss uh, common misconceptions which are related with correlations with the help of related examples. In addition, we will also discuss uh, the introduction uh, to regression analysis and then we will differentiate between the regression approach and the correlation uh, analysis. So, and then we will also introduce two main types of regression model and they are the simple regression model and the multiple regression model. So, let's start. So common confusions are misconceptions about correlation. There are many situations in which correlation is misleading. Uh, first of all, make sure that correlation is defined only when both variables, say x and y, they are jointly normal. That is, both variables x and y, they must have a joint normal distribution. So we have discussed the concept of bivariate distributions. So in this case, we have two variables, x and y, and uh, their joint distribution should be normal distribution. So they should be jointly normal. And if uh, they are not jointly normal, then the concept of correlation uh, is not uh, applicable, or it is wide concept, or it is not the, uh, it will not give us the accurate value of the linear association between x and y. So this is commonly misunderstood and people they do not care, people do not care about this assumption and they just blindly take any two variables uh, x and y, x can be height, y can be any other variable say weight but if they are, uh, they do not have joint normal distribution so then the concept of correlation is not defined or we should not calculate correlation. Even if we calculate, if uh, we calculate uh, the correlation between x and y, when x and y uh, are, uh, they don't have the joint normal distribution, then the calculated uh, value of correlations, we can calculate correlations uh, for any two variables uh, using simple formula of the correlation coefficient but in that case you will get just one single number but its interpretation will not be useful for any purpose. So if x and y they are jointly normal then correlation is meaningful and if x and y they don't have joint normal distribution then the correlation is meaningless. So this is very important to note. So in addition to this uh, uh, property, uh, we need to care about several other cases. Uh, the next case is the concept of non-linearity. So we know that correlation measures only the linear association uh, between the two variables. So it uh, does not take into account the non-linearity. So non-linear relationships they are not uh, clearly understood by the correlation. So we will explain this concept non-linearity in much uh, greater detail uh, with the help of some example uh, 
in our the, uh, this current lecture and then the concept of outliers so if there are uh, outliers in the data so then again the concept of correlation the value of correlation will mislead and then we will discuss uh, the ecological correlations and then the last one is the trends so let us start with the first uh, idea that is the non linearity idea so non linearity so consider the data set on x and y where y is equal to x square so here on the right hand side we have the table containing x values uh, ranging from minus 10 to plus 10 so with step size of minus 1 so minus 10 and then minus 9 uh, so step size is uh, one unit so the gap between any two consecutive numbers is called the step size so minus 10 minus 9 minus 8 and so on up to plus 10 and since y is equal to x square so it means uh, the first value of y will be square of minus 10 so square of minus 10 is plus 100 similarly square of minus 9 is plus 81 and square of minus 8 is plus 64 and so on in the end uh, last observations the square of plus 10 is plus 100 so we have data on x and y where y is x square so you can see that this relation is uh, uh, between uh, x and y where y is x square so it is uh, we have the non-linear relationship so if we plot uh, if we make a scatter plot of x and y so taking x variable along x axis and taking y variable along y axis so here is the scatter plot so from this scatter plot you can see that this y variable y is equal to x square so it is a non-linear relation it is showing us a non-linear relationship actually this uh, curve is called a parabola so so from this you can see that it is not a linear relationship linear means straight line uh, relationship so here we are seeing a curve so this means this is a non-linear relationship so let us calculate uh, the value of correlation so correlation uh, is calculated between x and y so it was found to be approximately zero so from this graph you can see that scatter plot shows very strong and it is actually showing the perfect relationship between x and y so knowing the value of x you can exactly determine what y is so when x is minus 10 y is square of this minus 10 which is plus 100 so it means uh, knowing the value of x we can exactly t tell what the value of y will be so it means there is a perfect relationship between y and x so it means the correlation between and x y should be a uh, hundred percent or it should be plus one but uh, when we calculated correlation of x and y so it was found to be uh, approximately zero so why this is the case although x and y they are perfectly related but their correlation is found to be zero so if we do not plot uh, the x and y values so we will we can simply say that oh yes there is no relationship between x and y but actually uh, f uh, from the scatter plot or from this mathematical equation we can see that x and y are perfectly related so this is the non-linear situations in which uh, the calculated value of correlation which is zero it is not depicting the uh, actual information so that's why the correlation uh, is defined uh, or it expresses only the linear relationship so it does not explain the relationship between the non-linear variables so this is one very important point to note so 
द कोरलेशन कोफिशेंट ओनली मेयर्स द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द लीनियर रिलेशनशिप हैंस इट इज एसेंशियल टू प्लॉट द डेटा प्रायर टू डूइंग एनी टाइप ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस इफ द डेटा डज नॉट फिट अ स्टैंडर्ड ज्वाइंट नॉर्मल पैटर्न और क्लोज टू ज्वाइंट नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन so then the standard analysis can be quite misleading and here in this case uh, if we have a non-linear relationship then again the calculated value of correlation will be misleading so one should be very uh, clear uh, that correlation measures the linear association between x and y so let us discuss the second situation so that is the outliers case so outliers present in a data can mislead so consider a data set uh, containing two variables x and y so you can see that x takes values 10 8 13 9 and so on similarly the variable y takes values 7.46 6.77 and so on so here is the scatter plot of x and y x variable is taken along x axis and y is taken along y axis so from the scatter plot you can see that this one point it is actually the outlier so if we shift this one point uh, to somewhat here so you can see that we get a perfect uh, line so we can draw a line which can connect all the points so it means just shifting this one point you can see that there is perfect relationship a linear a perfect linear relationship between x and y so note here a perfect linear relationship between x and y is spoiled by one outlier so if we shift this point here so then the value of correlation it should be 100 percent or it should be plus one because it has positive slope so but due to this one outlier because this observation uh, is dispersed so the calculated value of correlation is found to be 0 0.82 or 82 percent so it means one outlier in this data set it can spoil the value of correlation coefficient so if your data contains any outlier then yeah, the value of correlation that will not show the actual relationship between uh, the two variables in your data set here in this case we have x and y are the required two variables so it means outliers present in data can mislead so this is one uh, another very important point to note so there are certain uh, remedial measures which we can do that one way uh, is to remove the outliers from your data so if we remove this outlier from our data set so we can see that there is perfect relationship between x and y so the relationship between x and y it can be represented by a straight line so but usually uh, outliers they contain uh, very important information so any, any type of uh, sudden jump or downfall uh, due to outlier it can represent any type of economic boom or uh, recession period or it can uh, show us any economic uh, incident in positive direction or negative direction so for example uh, uh, due to Benazir assassination uh, the stock market uh, crashed and we see uh, we saw downward fall so so here is the downward fall so overall trend was increasing but at that particular period we saw downward fall so the outliers they contain uh, important information so simply deleting the outliers is not recommended but in some situation you can delete them uh, and simply uh, do the analysis uh, with uh, 
do the analysis of the data uh, without considering the outlier uh, observations. So the lesson is that correlation can mislead. So here is the lesson, one outlier or a small group of outliers can distort a strong correlation and make it appear as a zero or even negative uh, correlation in some cases. So as far as our example is concerned, there was perfect 100% correlation and due to one outlier, uh, the correlation reduces from 100% to 82%. But uh, if there exists uh, an extreme outlier or there exists a group of outliers uh, which are more extreme as compared to this specific outlier which is shown here, so then the correlation can appear uh, as a zero correlation or it can appear in some cases uh, negative. And actually relationship between X and Y is positive, but due to some outliers, the relation might be, uh, might be, might look like a negative relation. So next we discuss uh, the concept of ecological correlation. So when a correlation is measured at a group level, so and then conclusions drawn for individuals within the group, so then this is called an ecological correlations. So actually correlation is measured at a group level, but the conclusions drawn uh, from these correlations, they are applied for the individuals uh, which lie within the groups. So this type of correlation which is done at group level and the, its conclusion is drawn uh, to the members of groups is called the ecological correlation and ecological correlation also misleads most often. So we explain the idea of ecological correlation with the help of an example. So suppose we look at country data on total number of cigarettes consumed and total number of lung cancer cases. So we find a strong correlations. So at country data, so suppose we have data on uh, total number of cigarettes consumed for Pakistan and total number of lung cancer cases for Pakistan. So for Pakistan, we have one observation. So here, suppose we have countries and uh, here we have uh, X variable, so I am denoting this total number of cigarettes consumed as X and total number of lung cancer cases as Y, so X and Y. So suppose we have data on country 1, let's say Pakistan, on both variables X and Y, and then country 2, let's say India, 3, Bangladesh, 4, UAE, so we have data uh, on country level. So from this, uh, the calculated value of correlations uh, suggests that uh, there is a strong positive relationship between the two uh, variables, the number of cigarette consumed and the total number of lung cancer cases. So it means uh, as the number of cigarette consumes, uh, total number of cigarette consumes increases, so this will have this, so the total number of lung cancer cases also uh, increase. So it means there is a strong positive relationship. So from this, we might be tempted uh, to conclude that smoking causes cancer. However, countries do not smoke. So individuals actually smoke. So country, uh, they do not smoke. So if we have found, uh, if we find positive correlations, so this does not mean that smoking causes cancer. So why? Because this data is at group level. So countries, uh, one country is considered as one group. So countries do not smoke. So but individuals do. So this is an ecological correlation. So if we get a high correlations, so we should not conclude that smoking has positive relation with uh, lung cancer. 
because we are dealing with country level data. So it is easily possible to make up data such that despite a strong ecological correlations, there is no relationship between smoking and cancer at the individual level. So actually we see a strong positive relationship uh, between X and Y at the group level. So but we can create uh, a hypothetical situations where at group level we have uh, strong positive correlation but at individual level the correlation uh, is almost zero or there is no relationship between smoking and lung cancer uh, at the individual level. So let us uh, explain it. Uh, for example, suppose that there is a sequence of countries with increasing populations, 10, 100, 200, 500 and so on. And suppose all males in each country, they smoke, but none of them got, uh, get lung cancer, while none of the females smoke but all females get lung cancer. I am assuming a hypothetical situation. So uh, suppose all males uh, in uh, each country they smoke but none of them get lung cancer while none of the females smoke but all the females get lung cancer. So if we look at individual data on smoking and cancer at the individual level at level of persons, we will find a perfect correlation of minus 100%. It means perfect negative relationship between X and Y. Why? Because no one uh, who smokes gets cancer and no one who gets cancer smokes. However, if we look at the ecological correlation uh, at the group level, so we will find that there is a perfect positive correlation between smoking and cancer. The larger the number of smokers, the larger the number of lung cancer cases in each country. So there will be perfect linear relationship between the two at the level of country or at group level. So this means uh, you can see that both the correlations they are totally showing the opposite picture. So at group level, we see that there is a positive relationship uh, between the smoking and lung cancer, whereas actually what happens at the individual levels, uh, males, uh, only males smoke, but none of them ha uh, has lung cancer, and none of the females smoke, but uh, all of them, they get uh, lung cancer. So this example shows that group level correlation cannot necessarily be reduced to the level of individuals. So it means ecological correlation is most of the time misleading. So this is another very important point to note uh, while interpreting the value of correlation. So next case is uh, the trends case. So one of the most damaging and least understood phenomenon is that of spurious correlation. Correlation reveals the relationship between two stationary variables and it does not work to reveal any relationship between non-stationary uh, or in other words trended variables. So remember that non-stationary variables, they usually have either an upward or a downward trend. So most important such case is when the two variables in question have increasing or decreasing trend. So if there is a trend between the two variables, then again we should not use uh, the correlation. Uh, we should not calculate the value of correlation or we should not uh, rely on the calculated value of correlation. Why? Because in that case the correlation will be misleading. So the concept of correlation it applies only uh, to the stationary variables. So remember that stationary variables are those variables which do not have trend. So suppose uh, we plot 
uh, two variables. So suppose here is the plot of x uh, and here is the plot of y. So you can see that both are, uh, they have increasing trend. So if we calculate the correlation between the two, we will see a high value, maybe uh, 0.90 or 98%, 95% or even in some cases 99% or uh, it will be actually very high or close to 1. So even though uh, the two variables x and y, they are not, uh, they are not actually related. So this high value of correlation suggests that they are highly related or uh, there is strong linear association between the two but actually uh, we know that there is no relationship between the two. So this type is called the spurious uh, correlations. So let us explain the same idea with the help of an example. So consider data on GNP per capita for Bhutan and El Salvador. So here is the data uh, on right hand side so we have data on GNP for Bhutan and GNP for El Salvador. So we have data starting from 1979 and going up to 2005. So this is the gross national uh, product. So per capita, uh, it means the individual level or you can say that the uh, income data uh, of uh, Bhutan and El Salvador. So in practical terms, we could easily consider these to be independent series. Why? Because these two small economies, they are remote from each other geographically and have no linkages to speak of. So hence, the correlation is expected to zero. So we expect a zero uh, correlation between the GNP per capita uh, for Bhutan and GNP per capita for El Salvador. So let us actually calculate uh, the value of correlation. So when we calculated the value of correlation uh, using you can calculate it using Excel command the coral is the command or you can actually calculate the correlation by using your calculator by constructing uh, additional columns and uh, using the formula you can calculate the required numbers and you can plug in the required numbers in the formula to get the value of correlation. So the calculated value of correlation is found to be uh, 0 0.90 or 90 percent. Uh, whereas since there is no geographical link between the two, so the expected value of correlation was 0. But the actual value of correlation is found to be 90 percent. So it is positive so it means there is both the series they are highly related. So when GNP of Bhutan increases so then GNP of El Salvador also uh, goes up. So this is quite surprising. So why this is the case? So this is due to the fact that both series they have trends. So if we plot the data, we see an upward trend in both the series. So this 90% does not measure any real association between the two series. So before we measure correlation, it is necessary to transform the series to stationary ones. So if we plot these two series, we see an upward trend. So remember that either increasing or upward trend or decreasing or downward trend. Uh, both are, both shows non-stationary series. So before we measure correlations, it is necessary to transform the series to stationary ones. So Hey, if suppose we have series somewhat like this, so you can see that there is no trend. So there it is neither increasing nor decreasing. So it is showing the same behavior or actually we can see that this series, the values of this series, they can be captured uh, within these two horizontal lines. So it means this series, uh, this is the graph of a stationary series. So 
before we measure uh, correlations it is necessary to transform the series to stationary ones so one way to do this is by taking rates of growth for each economy so or differencing the series is another method that is most commonly used so if we take the difference so just subtract uh, the current from the current value the previous value so 1583.599 minus 1478 and then uh, similarly subtracting 1583 from this value and so on so if you construct another series let me do it so delta GNP for boton so this is GNP for boton so here you can see that uh, subtract 1478.424 from this second number so put the resultant number here and as far as this first number is concerned uh, since there is no value for the period 1978 so uh, we cannot subtract any value from this first value to calculate this first difference so leave this cell as a blank entry so similarly in order to calculate this third cell so subtract 1583.5 Five double nine from one six two six point seven one four and so on. Similarly, calculate the difference of El Salvador series. So, and if we take the correlation of these differenced series, you will see that uh, because the trends have been removed. So, in this case, uh, in that case, the value of correlation, the calculated value of correlation, will show uh, us the true picture. But here, since the two series, uh, GNP of Bhutan and GNP of El Salvador, they have an increasing trend, uh, upward trend or increasing trend. There is substantial literature on the best method to make a series stationary. That is same across time before applying any standard statistical techniques to it. And remember that the proper definition of stationarity is that the mean should uh, remain same across time the variance should also remain constant across time and the covariance uh, between a current value and the previous value should also remain same across time. So here as far as this uh, graph is concerned, so you can see that if we calculate the mean of all these numbers, so you can see that the mean will be somewhat here in the middle. So mean is same and similarly you can see that the spread is also same and there is no link between current and previous value so it means mean variance and covariance they are not depending upon time uh, in contrast if we consider a trended series so you can see that here uh, the mean is changing constantly so you can see that if we calculate the mean of this part so it will be somewhat here the middle value uh, this value let's say 10 is the mean but if we calculate the mean of this second part of series uh, so you can see that the mean is let's say 30 so now mean is changing so if we if the series has either an increasing or decreasing trend so then it means the mean is uh, no, uh, mean uh, is not same across time so it is changing across time so but one condition for stationarity is that mean variance and covariance they do not remain uh, they do not a change across time so before calculating correlations make sure the variables are stationary and since in case of trends the variables are not uh, non stationary so correlation is meaningless so correlation of both series after differencing is found to be only 26 percent or 0 0.26 which is much less than the calculated value of x y before taking the difference that was 90 percent so the lesson is that trends can mislead the real uh, correlation so this is one very important point to note so before making correlation you have to remove the trend first so note that for El Salvador and Bhutan, it is easy to see on intuitive grounds that the two series have no relationship with each other. 
so why because they are there is no geographical link between the two uh, economies so this makes it easy to dismiss the statistical correlation of 90% as being spurious or non essential so these two words have been used in the literature on this subject so whenever there exists a correlation that is not real uh, we say that the correlation is the spurious correlation or it is a non sense correlation between the uh, two variables however when we expect to see a relationship between the two series so then the same problem becomes much more serious so someone does a correlation between gnp and money stock for pakistan so the result will be a very large number so it means there is a positive relationship between gnp and money stock so now he could argue for a very strong relationship between the two because we expect that there is some real relationship between these two variables even though we again have a time series data and the both variables are trended but in this case both variables they have a real relationship between the two so there is positive link between money stock and gnp so this is one very important point to note so it means whether trend exists uh, you need to be very careful whether actual relationship between uh, the two variables exists or not so in case of el salvador and botan we actually know we know in prior that there is no link between the two countries so gnp of the two countries uh, are not related so expected value of correlation is zero but when we calculated the correlation it was found to be 90% so that was a big shock to us that uh, because there is no economical uh, no geographical link between the two countries so the gnp of bhutan should not be related with gnp of el salvador so but here as far as these two variables the gnp and money stock for pakistan are concerned we can see that both variables are for one specific country so there is a strong positive correlation uh, relationship between the two variables so if in this case we see a st very strong positive relation or value of correlation high value of correlation so then we could argue that uh, there is some real relationship between the two variables so the fact that correlation here is non essential does not seem quite so obvious so there is a conflict between the two so this is one very impo important point to note while interpreting correlations in case of trended variables so the general lesson so we have considered many cases where correlation can mislead us so quoting a decisive number uh to a lay audience will sound very definite and authoritative and in addition it will help win arguments so as a statistics student you should be well aware of all the misconceptions uh which are related with correlations and should not get trapped in the false interpretations so usually people use a false value of correlation uh to deceive other people so but you people should be well aware of this idea so this is one very important point to note so let us demonstrate the common misconceptions regarding correlations uh using uh, the same data which we used in slides so here in excel spreadsheet where we actually calculated the value of correlation so here is the data x uh, ranges from minus 10 minus 9 it ranges from minus 10 to plus 10 and y is the square of x so it is uh, a to square so square of minus 10 is uh, 100 so similarly the square of minus 9 is 81 a3 square and so on so if we make a scatter plot by selecting both columns x and y so here is the scatter plot so from the scatter plot you can see that if we know the value of x we can exactly tell what y is so the calculated value of uh, co correlation should be 100% so but what happens so when we used the excel built in command the coral command which calculates the correlation between the two series 
x and y. So coral A22, A22 uh, and comma B22, to B22. So if we press enter, so you can see that it is minus 2.73542 E minus 17. E minus 17 mean it is 0 0.000. So it is 17 times 0 and then the number 273542. So you can see that it is almost 0. So whereas it should be 100%. So but due to this non-linearity, uh, the correlation is uh, reduced to 0. So if we do not plot uh, these two variables and we simply calculate the value of correlations we can mislead so we can interpret that there is no relationship between the two uh, but actually they are perfectly related so here is the data for outlier case so you can see that x and y variables are here so this is one outlier point so you can note this point it is on x axis value 13 and y axis 12.7 so this value is uh, an outlier so this is showing us the wrong picture so if we calculate the value of correlation so uh, actually if we remove it so then the calculated value of correlation is 100% uh, but uh, let us calculate the correlation so coral of x series comma y series so a2 to a12 and comma b2 to b12 it is around 81.8 percent so let us copy the same data here but this time i am going to remove this observation so and now again calculating the correlation so you can see that it is 100 percent 0.999 and it is exactly one so it is very close to one actually so there's slight uh, difference but if you round it off it is uh, plus one so due to this one outlier which have been removed here in the data below so the correlation uh, increases from 81 to uh, 99 or 100 percent so it means outliers can also distort so as far as this particular example is concerned we have considered only one outlier so but there might be situations in which we have uh, two or more than two outliers so in that case it is very difficult even in some cases to recognize the outliers so so we cannot remove actually uh, there are certain uh, there are several methods uh, which we can use to deal with the outlier handling outliers so let us consider uh, the trend case so here is the same data the GNP of Bhutan and GNP of El Salvador for the year 1979 to 2005 so here is the calculated value of correlation so coral of B2 to B28 and C2 to C28 so this is the correlation between X and Y so you can see that it is 89.37 percent or approximately you can say that it is 89 percent or uh, 90 percent uh, as far as if you consider them in the form of whole numbers so again since the variables are trended so this correlation is meaningless or it is the spurious correlation so let us calculate the difference so d botan mean the difference of uh, gnp for botan and difference of gnp for el salvador so in order to calculate this difference so just subtract uh, this previous value from the current value so b3 minus b2 so and next in the next cell we have b4 minus b3 so note that we we have lost one observation why because we do not have value for the year 1978 in order to calculate the difference for uh, the year 1979 so that's why uh, you need to leave the first cell as blank entry so uh, so that's why our number of observations they now starts from 1980 instead of 1979 so similarly here is the difference of GNP of uh, El Salvador 
so c3 minus c2 and c4 minus c3 and so on so now uh, these two due to the difference they becomes the stationary variables or trend have been removed so when the trend is removed so now calculated value of correlations you can use again the coral command e3 to e28 then f3 to f28 so the value of correlation is around 26.49 or 27 percent so you can see that uh, previously we are seeing a very high value of correlation that is close to 100 percent or 90 percent so whereas the actual correlation is 26.5% uh, or 27%. So these are the common situations in which the one should be very careful while interpreting correlation. So the general lesson. So we have considered many cases where correlation can mislead us. So coding a decisive number to a lay audience will sound very definite and authoritative uh, and in addition it will help win arguments. So as a statistics student, you should be well aware of all the misconceptions and should not get trapped in false interpretations. So this is one very important point to note. So now let us discuss the regression analysis. Regression analysis is certainly the most important tool at the statistician's and econometrician disposal. So regression is concerned with describing and evaluating the relationship between a given variable and one or more other variables. More specifically, regression is an attempt to explain movements in a variable by reference to movements in one or more other variables. To make the idea more concrete, denote the variable whose movements the regression seeks to explain by y and the variables which are used to explain those variations by x1, x2 and so on xk. So hence in this relatively simple setup it would be said that variations in k variables the x is it uh, they cause changes in some other variable y or in other words y is uh, being affected by the variations in variables x1 to xk or x1 to xk they are uh, affecting the variable y. So there are various completely interchangeable names for y and the x's. So names for y and names for x's. So y is usually called the dependent variable whereas the x's they are called the independent variable so it means y depends upon x so y the independent variable it depends upon several the y is the dependent variable it depends upon several independent variables the x's so x1 x2 and xk similarly another name for y is regressant and x, uh, x's are called regressors. So y is regressant which is being regressed uh, on x's, x1 to xk. So x1 to xk they are called regressors. So another name for the dependent variable y is the effect variable and for the x's uh, they are called the causal variables. So x's they are causing uh, or y is affected by x's or x's are causing y. Another name is that y is called the explained variable and uh, y is explained by x's and x's are called explanatory variables. So they are explaining uh, the variations in y. So usually the most common name for y is the dependent variable and for the uh, X is independent variables are regressors is used. So before moving further, let us differentiate regression from correlation. So note that regression and correlation, they have some fundamental differences. So in regression analysis, there is an asymmetry in the way the dependent and explanatory variables are treated. So it means the dependent and explanatory variables, they are treated differently. The dependent variable 
is assumed to be statistical or random or stochastic. That is, it must have a probability distribution. Whereas, the explanatory variables, on the other hand, they are assumed to be fixed or they must take uh, on fixed values. So, the dependent variable is random, whereas the independent variables, they are assumed to be fixed. In correlation analysis, on the other hand, we treat any two variables symmetrically. There is no distinctions between the dependent and explanatory variables. So, after all, the correlation between two variables, the score on mathematics examination and scores on statistics examination is same as that between score on statistics ex examination and score on mathematics examination. So, if we reverse the uh, variables, so correlation between x and y is same as correlation between y and x and there is no concept of dependent and independent variables. And in addition, both variables are assumed to be random, whereas in case of regression, uh, dependent variable y is assumed to be random, whereas independent variable or variables, if we have more than one variable, uh, then the independent variables, they are assumed to be fixed. Uh, but in case of correlations, both variables are considered as random. And another important point that correlation is symmetric, that is correlation between y and x is same as correlation between x and y. As I have already explained that scores on mathematics and statistics. If we take correlation by taking first variables uh, as score obtained in mathematics and second variable score obtained in statistics, if we calculate their correlation, suppose it is 50 percent and now if we reverse the variables, their position is reverse score on statistics first variable, score on mathematics second variable. So then the correlation will remain same, it will be 50 percent. But in case of regression, there is uh, an asymmetry. The regression of y on x, where y is dependent variable, x is independent variable, it is totally different from regression of x on y, where x is dependent variable and y is independent variable. So, regression is not symmetric. So, regression of y on x and x on y is different, whereas correlation is a symmetric measure. So, correlation between x, y is same as correlation between y and x. And in regression analysis, the dependent variable, usually denoted by y, it is assumed to be random, whereas the independent variables, a variable or variables x uh, or x's, uh, they are assumed to be fixed. Whereas in correlation, both variables, they are assumed to be random. They must be random or actually they must be jointly, uh, jointly uh, they must be random variable and they should follow jointly normal distribution in order to get a valid value of correlation coefficient. So, this is the slide, uh, this is uh, one very important difference uh, between regression and correlation. So, these are some of the very important differences between regression and correlation. So, now we discuss two important types of regression model. First one is simple regression model, another one is multiple regression model. If it is believed that y uh, which is dependent variable, it depends only on uh, one explanatory or independent variable x. So, then the regression model is said to be simple. So, for example, wage which is dependent variable, it depends upon one explanatory variable uh, which is education. So, wage depends upon education. So, this is an example of a simple regression model. Similarly, another example might be uh, uh, consumption depends upon income. So, consumption is a dependent variable, income is independent variable. If your income goes up, consumption level uh, will also go up. So, there is positive relationship between the two. Same positive relationship between wage and education. As you get, as your education level increases, your earning or wage also goes up. So, if uh, it is believed that why the dependent variable depends on two or more than two explanatory variables, 
let us say x1, x2 uh, to so on, xk. So then the regression model is said to be a multiple. So for example, wage depends upon education as well as experience. So here we have two explanatory variables. So if a dependent variable is affected by two or more than two explanatory variables, then the relationship is called. Uh, it will be represented with the help of a multiple regression model. So let us review the main concepts in today's lecture. So in today's lecture, we have discussed the common misconceptions about correlation and we have explained all the common misconceptions with the help of related examples. In addition, uh, we introduce you to the regression analysis. So, and then we uh, differentiated the regression uh, from the correlation and in the end we discussed two important types of regression model. The first one is simple regression model and second one is multiple regression model. So, in the next lecture we will uh, discuss more on regression and its importance and in particular we will discuss the method of ordinary least square uh, and some related concepts and we will also discuss some related examples of this OLS method. So till then Allah Hafiz.